Hi everybody. This is the first time I'm making a video, so I hope you can hear me and I hope everything uh, is clear. I'm going to show you how I color my pressed flowers using pastel. I've been doing this for um, the past 25 years or so. I've been working with pressed flowers for about 35 years, give or take, and have struggled trying to find ways to uh, retain the color because there's nothing worse than having faded flowers, um, especially if you're selling your work. Anyway, uh, let's move quickly into how to do this. I use two different kinds of pastels, um, sometimes three actually. I have some pencils as well. But uh, the first thing in, that I have found that is very convenient is something called pan pastel. And it's basically like eyeshadow in a way. It's, it's almost pure pigment with very little binder. The thing that holds pastels together, of course, is binder. Uh, so the other uh, types of pastel I use are stick pastel. And it doesn't matter what um, brand you use, as long as it says soft. You want soft pastels. Occasionally I do use a hard pastel if I don't have the, the color that I want. And that might be one of these sticks. They're, they're cheaper than other brands. Um, and I'll show you how I use that in a second. Anyway, the first thing I do, let's just say I, I've set up uh, th four different uh, textures of flowers. This is a very uh, soft, sort of brittle piece of uh, foliage. Um, this is a very uh, delicate petal here. This is a little less delicate, but it, it needs uh, two tones to make it come back to a, what a bleeding heart should look like. And this is a green ginkgo leaf, and I'm going to sort of change the color a little bit. Uh, and ginkgo, and a lot of times leaves, are a, have a heavier texture. And it's almost like you're coloring on paper. They're not as delicate as some other things. Anyway, all I use is um, regular Q-tip. I've tried to use brushes and uh, makeup appliers, uh, applicators, uh, but that doesn't work as well as this is also you go through them through a lot of them quickly so and I also can mix colors let's start with um, let's start with the blue one as a matter of fact now this is using the hard pastel and what you would do with this or the other sticks is you make a puddle so you're oops it's not in camera let's move the camera a little okay you make a puddle I'm working on a paper plate, by the way. I do everything on paper plates, including storage. This is the storage. And I use big bowls. These are all from like dollar, the dollar store. Um, and I also use candy, uh, popcorn tins, things like that to hold the plates And as I categorize them. Anyway, so this is how you would make a puddle. And then take a Q-tip and rub it in there. Now this looks pretty electric so you may not want to apply it over the whole thing but um, let me move the camera a little bit. Okay you can see I haven't done this much. I'm very old. Okay anyway you're basically holding on to it. You don't want to just be rubbing and I'm, gen I'm stroking it gently. Now you notice I'm not doing the whole uh, petal and I'm also not doing, um, I'm trying to shade it a little bit so it's not all one color. You want it to look sort of natural. This is a, from a, um, uh, I always want to call it diphtheria. Um, it's a delphinium. So this is a delphinium petal. And say I want the center to be a little darker, I might just go right down the center with a, a slightly heavier brush stroke or something and let it be a little bit less dark blue on the sides and maybe do a little bit of this part but you can also change the color a little you might want to make this really dark for instance um, but maybe even a brown color or something makes it more look look more natural that's my goal is to try to make them as look as natural as possible uh, uh, to the original okay and say so there's a very delicate um, heart-shaped leaf uh, petal 
from a small rose. And this is a sort of brightish red. Um, this red does not really match this, but um, I kind of like to use this, this rather um, bright, you know, cherry red on some of my reds. It makes it pop. But I could also um, add some of this to tone it down a little bit, maybe change the, uh, the shade a little bit. But I, I'm doing the same thing. I'm rolling it around in here. And if I was using a stick, I could make another puddle. But doing the same thing. Very, you see, I'm just brushing it lightly. And to some degree, if you, I know you've been working with petals. You know that they're somewhat like pieces of paper. So that's all you're doing. You're trying to Im embed the color into the paper. Petal. Uh, and then as far as getting the excess off, I usually just rub it with my finger like this. And I, I just go over it a couple times maybe, but keep rubbing it so that you get the excess off. You could also blow on it, but they, I've been told many times it, you don't want that this pigment in the air. Um, I have uh, usually wear a pair of pajamas that I wipe my hands on or uh, sweatpants or something or sometimes I have wet wipes if it gets too messy and I just keep cleaning my hands because they do tend to get uh, full of pigment. Okay so that's that's uh, something delicate like a rose petal. Uh, using similar colors now I've got this very large uh, rose and I um, it's sort of a magenta color uh, but it's not as bright as say this magenta this is this is a bit of a different shade so what I might do is combine the colors this this red and this magenta okay um, let me put that aside for a second Okay, and the same thing, these are very soft. I might go inside, before even touching these, I might um, normally go in and add some glue under here. And I, I often use these um, needle point uh, glue uh, applicators. I just fill this with glue. You can find those on Amazon. Uh, and, well, this one's not working too well. But basically, there you go. I might put some glue down in between, try to get rid of some of these floaty um, areas like this. You want everything to be stuck down as, as good as possible. Okay, and we've got this center part here that I would like it to be I would like to be yellow. But anyway, let's let's go um, in and mix the colors. I'm gonna start with this color with the dark magenta and again using very you hold hold it with your fingers softly you see how it changes that color from a, a pale color to a, a bright brighter magenta but I also want it to be a little bit red and what I might do with the red um, color and I f could flip the uh, q-tip for that is add a little red maybe to this part, just this, the center area, not all the way down the petal, but just to kind of pull the colors up. So I'm sort of blending. You don't have to go do all of these uh, methods like this. You can do it your own way. But this is what I do. I try to make it look more natural. Um, okay, and then I would end it at, uh, try to make a bit of yellow in the center, and I might I don't usually do this all in one plate, obviously. I have a, 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 a plate for each color. But if you want to, um, let's see, pick up another Q-tip here. And you'll have this. And you might just tap it. You just tap it in like this. And try to, try to bring a little bit of brightness to the center. And this is one where I probably would blow on it. Um, or when I'm gluing it, I might um, use some glue, kind of like Mod Podge, you know, a thin, a thinner glue. I might take some uh, regular Elmer's and thin it out, so it's a little bit watery. But you don't want to, you don't want to re-wet your dried materials. That that doesn't make any sense. But you see how that that bit of yellow in the center kind of made it pop up, and it looks a little more natural. Uh, gives it a little bit more. Uh, depth. Okay, and then uh, let's work on these two. 
This is a bleeding heart, and bleeding hearts generally have two shades to them. So I might actually, in order to uh, create the original shades, I have um, a lighter pink. I have this dark magenta, which I can use on the outside area. I have pink and um, white, and I want to make this middle area a pinkish white. If, if You've probably seen ble bleeding hearts, but basically I'm going to mix them together and add a little more white to that. And then I will um, see I'm picking I'm picking up the, the dust with the q-tip and I will caress the center area which is the lighter pink like this and then the other area this part um, I'll go back in with the magenta, and I don't want it to be dark, 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 so I will caress it gently, trying not to tear it. You have to kind of hold on to these things, and even stroking it may not be the, the ticket with it. You may have to dab it in like this, kind of mush it in. And you see already how, how different this is. You can put a little bit of that darker stuff at the bottom. And on um, Bleeding Hearts, there's always this little black dot. Uh, that's just the way it is. I sometimes take a pen and I just add a little bit of ink or something. I can, you can do it with black um, pastel as well. But I, I sometimes just go in with some ink and bring out that little black dot. Occasionally there's a black area up here, and I might do it there, too. Just not that anybody else even notices such touches, but I do, so that's why I do things like that. Okay, and then um, this little part of the bleeding heart is often quite dark, so I combine some bright red, and you can also even use a little black there if you want to, but I want to make that little thing darker than all of it. See how I've got like three shades of pink on here now? Um, and there's actually, this part is kind of dark too, if you look at a bleeding heart. So I've got um, light pink in the middle, magenta here, and then a, a darker reddish magenta here. And then of course I would do the other side the same way too. And um, you see how different it, it was from the original. The original, actually on the other side, that's what the original looked like. It's, there's, it's very uh, pale. There's hardly any color in it. It's almost white. Um, and this is the enhanced version. Um, and that's all you're doing is enhance, enhancing the, the color that's already there. And in this case, I'm bringing it back because it, a lot of these petals, as you know, fade quite a lot. And then the final thing, um, this is, you can treat this a little rougher because it's, um, it's thicker and uh, a ginkgo, a lot of leaves, uh, get very uh, stiff, so they're not they're easy to work with. Um, I need another Q-tip. I have some more pan pastels, and they, there's two two shades. I think I want to go with this with both of them actually. Um, let me move these. I would start with this darker one. Um, no, maybe I'll start with the lighter one and see where that goes. And you can sort of almost change the color of something if you really want to. Uh, this is, um, I know this looks like a big mess. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty messy anyway, but uh, I try to be a little more organized than this. Anyway, um, here I'm brushing on this sort of yellowy green. It's a light yellowy green. Get as much dust as you can there. And I'm holding on, but it's not necessary. You can be a little bit rough with it. And I have lightened it quite a bit. Um, it went from sort of being dull to having a brighter, a brighter color. And there are petals you'll discover that don't want to take the color. For whatever reason, the structure of the cells on the top of the, the petals, uh, certain things are too slick. Like I've never been able to color irises. Um, there are a few others that just don't take color, but you, those are things you just have to discover along the way. 
Okay, now I'm going to take a little more of this sort of almost olive green, and I might um, make it darker down here at the at this part, the lower area of it, and maybe um, just create a little bit of shading or shadow to. And something like a ginkgo leaf may not fade that much, but in five or ten years it would be pretty much beige, you know, kind of. Uh, the chlorophyll would be leached from it, and that's true of most of these petals. They, they, they will lose their color within a year or two or three. Delphiniums are surprisingly, they stay, they stay uh, blue for a long time, but most flowers do not. Uh, okay, and then in order to, people have asked, well, do you put a fixative on it or whatever? I don't. I just take my thumb and I rub it like that, and it comes off on my fingers, but I just wipe that on my whatever schmata I'm wearing, or a paper towel, or a wet paper towel, or some wet wipes, or something like that. Um, okay, that's pretty much the, the method. And then from this point, I would uh, glue this onto the, the board that I'm working on, the thing that I'm working on. What am I working on right now? I'm working on this right now, which is a, uh, a commission that I'm working on. Things like these very delicate uh, leaves right here, those are tricky. And in fact, maybe I'll, I'll give those a try right now. Um, but you have to just be really, really careful and um, I guess the word is gingerly apply your uh, pastel to those. But it's the same thing. Since this, any one of these leaves can come off, um, just do it very, I would pat these, not stroke them. Yep, see, I've already broken one. But over the years, I've learned that you can always glue everything back together if one of the leaves falls off. It's, it's delicate work. It's painstaking. Uh, I used to say it was tedious, but my brother said, don't say it's tedious. It makes it sound like it's, like you hate doing it. <laughs> but uh, I don't hate doing it. I just, it is painstaking, and it takes a while to get the touch and the feel of it. Um, and that's it. I, I also do uh, color. Uh, by the way, this is how I, I'm, I'm not real careful with my, this is how I store my uh, bleeding hearts in uh, on paper plates. Uh, I don't color. I do work with butterflies and uh, I will uh, mount them on paper, glue them on paper, and I don't color those, I don't touch those, with. but sometimes I, I have to, if it flakes a little, I might go in with a, a marker or something, or even some pastel. I use feathers, I don't color the feathers. I do color things like uh, twigs, twigs, and uh, these spirally things, so sometimes I'll add some color to those because they um, will fade to a lighter color. And I, if I want them to stay the right color, I, I will add some uh, color to them. Anyway, okay, I hope that was helpful. I'm sure there'll be some questions. Um, but that's all for now. Thanks.